Welcome to RoboSquid TV. I'm Kyle, and together we're going to make beautiful websites. Welcome back if you've been following our web school playlist, and welcome new devs. Today we're going to be talking about how to make sure that your website is in fact beautiful. No coding in this episode, today we're only talking about design theory and we're going to make a mock-up design. This episode was made possible by Hover.com. After you build your next website and want to share it with the world, use Hover.com's intelligent search tool to find the perfect domain name with hundreds of extensions to choose from. Get 10% off your own custom domain name or email and support this channel by going to Hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. And with that, let's get started. Knowing how to code a website is one thing, but that's only half the job. If we want our websites to keep our visitors on the page and keep them engaged, our website should serve its purpose effectively. You ultimately want your viewer to perform some kind of action, maybe purchase an item or share something on social media, and your design will influence those actions, hopefully effectively. Let's talk about making beautiful websites. Step one, whiteboard your ideas. Before we even start designing, we need to know first what we want our design to accomplish. Who's visiting our website? Why are they visiting? And what is your desired result of having a visitor? On paper or somewhere else, start planning. Get an idea of the elements you need on the page and keep in mind the goals of the visitor and the goals as the designer. Let's take a look at some well-designed websites. I always like to look at modern financial companies because their designs are always optimized to get their viewers to open their wallets. They develop trust with their designs. Mint.com. It's very simple. There's a small navigation bar. Underneath there's our main focus area, which has a title and a little tagline or short phrase underneath, and a call to action to get that user to sign up. Below is some more information for the user. If they've gotten to this point on the page, they haven't signed up yet, maybe because they need to know more about why they should sign up. Immediately following are three quick little blurbs about what the product does followed by three larger rows that give more detailed information, which link off to pages where you can get more specific information. At the bottom of the page, if they missed it the first time, they have the opportunity to sign up again at the bottom of the page. These user experience decisions are important when you're considering our design. Next, get a pencil and some paper. Now that you know what your website is and what it needs to accomplish, it's time to get some ideas down on paper. You could immediately jump into a tool like Sketch or Photoshop, but first you should really rapid fire some ideas on paper. I use this dot grid notebook. This notebook is really cool because it has these evenly spaced gray dots. It's kind of like graph paper, but the dots don't clutter the page and easily vanish behind your design. You can use a notebook like this or graph paper if you prefer, and links are in the description, so be sure to check those out. We use something like this so that we can use a simple grid system when designing a website. Now we could go on and use something like a 12 column grid system, which you may already be familiar with, especially if you've used something like Bootstrap. But for now, we're gonna keep it pretty loose and on the paper, we're just gonna get some general concepts down. It will help to have some kind of ruler to make straight lines. What I'm using here are some stainless steel stencil kits, which you can use as a ruler, but also have stencils for various icons and user interface elements you may commonly use. This one will actually let you create an iPhone screen mockup on paper, which is just cool to help visualize mobile devices. We aren't worried about colors or fonts or contrast or anything like that. We're just gonna get down our general layout. And remember, your job is not to fill up this space with as much information as possible. In fact, it's almost the opposite. Now for this episode, we're gonna mock up one possible design for the future robosquidtv.com website. For our purposes, this website will serve as a home for premium web development courses in the future. We still want to promote the free videos here on YouTube, and as an added secondary focus, I'd like to add a newsletter sign-up form so fans of the show can sign up for exclusive or important channel updates. We know we need a navigation panel, which typically exists as a bar at the top of our website. Our branding at the top left of the nav bar will also serve as our home button. You may say this isn't the best choice as the user may not be able to find the home button on your website if you do this, but make sure you consider your audience when making these types of decisions. If your visitors are less tech savvy or older, they may not be accustomed to this kind of behavior and will need some kind of explicit home button. However, since my viewers are interested in learning web development, I believe they will be reasonably familiar with this behavior. We will also add learn, premium, sponsor, and contact. Learn will bring us to a catalog of our free YouTube videos, and premium will be a separate catalog of paid courses, a page for sponsors so they can get information on how to support the show, and finally a contact page, which is pretty self-explanatory. 
Next is our hero header, a fairly common element on any website. This area is our main focus where we want our user to look and take action. We saw this earlier on the mint.com website. This will have a heading, something to let the users know what we do or why they're there. So something like learn web design, and then maybe a little blurb or subtext explaining that we have video tutorials. Now our call to action will actually have two. We want to call our visitor to either our free catalog or a pro catalog, so I'll add two buttons. Now, if they scroll past this point, they are either not yet convinced that they want to watch the videos or they're looking for something else. We'll add some more information, but first, while I have this area of focus for our call to action, I'll put our newsletter sign up form on the next row. Taking inspiration from our mint.com example, below we'll have a short features list or more information to get the visitor watching our tutorials. For our design, we'll have two two-column rows with links to videos on opposite sides. The top row will feature our beginner's course, which you are watching right now, which starts with the basics of HTML. And our second row will have our top video. Beneath that, I think we'll have one last reference to our premium content, and we'll finish up our page with some social media links. Make sure you use the grid to create a uniform and evenly spaced column in your design. Your design should accomplish the goals you set earlier and be easy for the user to navigate. Once you're happy with your layout, it's time to get into Photoshop or another prototyping tool. I would highly suggest using a pre-configured 12 column PSD and the link is in the description. We're using this to help keep our design organized the same way we did in our notebook. But if you are using a 12 column grid CSS framework like Bootstrap, uh, this will help us convert our design to code later. Now this isn't a Photoshop tutorial, but if you guys are interested in that, leave a comment below. We are going to start to flush out our design using the guides to help us. The important parts of this process are typography, color, white space, consistency, and repetition. Picking the right font is probably a video on its own, and it can completely change the look and mood of your website. Be sure to check the description for links because I'm going to leave a ton of resources. Google Fonts is one of the best resources for finding new fonts because they are all freely available to be used on your website. This may take some trial and error to find the right font, but keep in mind the goals that you have and the feeling that you want your website to have. Using a serif font may make your website seem editorial or maybe academic. If your website does call for some kind of stylistic display font, make sure that it's still legible and used sparingly. Google Fonts also has a cool tool to help you pair your font with a complementary font which could be used to establish a visual hierarchy to help separate headings from content. For our design, we'll be using Montserrat, a clean, modern-looking typeface that we'll be using the bold variant for in our heading. Now we'll start working with our color palette, which is arguably more important than our typeface. Color obviously has a huge impact on the mood of your website. You have to use it with purpose and sparingly. You'll generally have one or two primary colors and one or two accent colors. There are a ton of websites out there to help you come up with color palettes, and I'll have links for you in the description, but as long as you have two colors with a good contrast between them, you should be alright. I'm a fan of these flat UI colors from Material UI. I'm going to be working with white, and an alternative dark background, and two accent colors of green and yellowish orange. When you apply these colors, make sure it is in a consistent fashion. Your element's color should serve a purpose. You should set yourself a small list of rules on how to use your colors. You might even wanna make your own style guidelines, but that's definitely a different video. In my design here, I'm really using green as my primary color, and green is a relaxing color. It's a color often associated with freshness or nature, but it's also heavily associated with money or wealth. You may think that blue might be a better choice here for our website's primary color, and it might be. Blue is definitely associated with trust and security, but it can also be more serious and professional, maybe even clinical looking. I'm choosing green here to appear a little more friendly and appealing. This isn't um, the most formal education setting. We like to keep it loose. Now, yellow we are using in our calls to action. Yellow and orange and red all demand our attention. The cool thing about these colors is they essentially hack your brain. Your mind can ignore most colors, but these warm colors are hardwired in your brain to take our focus. Take a look at any buy now button or add to cart button on any website. There's a very good chance that they will be using a yellow or orange type color. And that's really all we are using for our color. Our background for our hero header is essentially gray, but it has a bluish tint to it, which is just a little less jarring than a full gray or black. Now take a step back and take a look at your design. We're pretty much done now that we have a real mock-up of our website. How do we like it? Is there an appropriate amount of white space and do we have consistency or repetition? Well, I think we did an all right job with our design. 
there's maybe some things we could change if we spent more time looking at it. Take your design and test it. Give it to someone representative of the audience and get their opinion and get their thoughts. Ultimately, the visitors are the end judge of our design. All right, guys, next up, we're going to code this website from scratch using Flexbox, and we'll be visiting CSS Grid real soon. After you build your first website with me, you're going to need a great domain name to share that website with the world. Hover.com's minimalist intelligent search tool will help you find a great domain name for your website. Simply enter a keyword and let Hover.com find the perfect domain with hundreds of cool extensions to choose from. And even if you're not building your own website, you can easily connect your domain to tons of services, such as Shopify. In a few clicks, you can get your online business started. You can even connect your new domain name to a custom email address for just $5 a year. And if you need any help, call their amazing support team and you'll get connected right to a real human ready to help. Support the show and get 10% off your own custom domain name or email by going to hover.com forward slash RoboSquidTV. Thanks again for watching. If you're still here with me at this point in the video, you are why I make these videos. Thank you so much. Leave a comment below if you've made it this far. If you need any more, you can always subscribe, follow on Twitter, and of course, like on Facebook. And now, inspired by this video, we have an Instagram as well, so be sure to check that out. All of the links are in the description, and I'll see you real soon. I'd like to love you.